I got this guy, Stephen Pressfield, who wrote this book, Gates of Fire. He also wrote The Legend of Bagger Vance, which is a very different read, and then a bunch of other warrior-type books. But he's become a good friend and mentor. And this book, Gates of Fire, is about the, the 300 Spartans at Thermopylae, right? The, the, the Spartan culture that's one of the, the A-class warrior cultures from antiquity. I think most people know this story now because of movies. These 300 Spartans went to defend this spot of a, of a Persian emperor coming to, uh, to subjugate the known world. But if you don't know the story, to make it simple, 300 Spartans get sent on a suicide mission, basically, to hold up a Persian emperor and his million-plus man army descending on Greece. They went to hold up his forces long enough so the rest of the, the warriors could rally for the true fight. They knew they weren't coming home, and that proved true. But this story is a novel with a lot of historical accuracies, but it's told from the perspective of a single Spartan squire that was found barely alive after seven plus days of battle. And this Persian emperor threw his surgeons at this squire and said, keep him alive, I need to interview him, it's critical, keep him alive. And so it's the conversations between this squire and this Persian emperor. But at one point the emperor, the Persian, asks this squire about the Spartan king. He'd never seen a king exhibit valor and leadership like the Spartan king in any culture he'd subjugated. The kings were usually in the rear watching the battle unfold. The Spartan king was on the front line of assault in the very first wave of attack and he had never seen that quality before. So he asked this squire about the, the Spartan king's quality. It's one of my favorite quotes on leadership. This is the squire talking to the Persian emperor about the Spartan king. I will tell his majesty what a king is. A king does not abide within his tent while his men bleed and die upon the field. A king does not dine while his men go hungry, nor sleep when they stand watch upon the wall. A king does not command his men's loyalty through fear, nor purchase it with gold. He earns their love by the sweat of his own back and the pains he endures for their sake. That which comprises the harshest burden, a king lifts first and sets down last. A king does not require service of those he leads, but provides it to them. He serves them, not they him. I'm telling you right now, depending on how you run your team, if you're a captain, if you're a coach, if you're a referee, wherever you break out in this sport, if you have figured this out, that the higher you go up the chain of command, the more people you are now in service to, there is nothing else you need to know about leadership. If it's the opposite, if you believe the higher you go up the chain of command, the more seniority you gain, you now have more people working to you, working for you or subject to you, you are blowing it. And if you don't believe it, I guarantee you your troops and teammates know it. Don't be that type of leader. Pick up those burdens first. Show up to practice early. Stay late. Always have that energy. Always be the example that you can set for those young players. It sets a, a, a force of motion and action that cannot be stopped. And if you have it, it won't go away. If you don't have it, you have to cultivate it. it, it it's hugely important. 